Well, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining our webinar today, Cues and Clues, what prospects are telling you and what you need to say then and there. Uh, my name is Nathan Stelter, president here at the Stelter Company, and we decided in the uh, work from home world, we'll do the webinar a little differently and uh, provide the video side uh, for those familiar uh, with our series, uh, as well as maybe you've seen me before. You may see that I look a little different today. I actually had, a, up until a couple days ago, a great eight-week-old uh, uh, work-from-home beard going on. Uh, but uh, as of yesterday, and Jen, I think we have a slide. There it is. We decided to bring a little levity to our all-company Zoom meeting. As many of you have these never-ending Zoom meetings, uh, uh, six of us showed up and my daughter. You see my daughter in the corner there, Bryn and we're the cast of Napoleon Dynamite. So I got stuck with Kip, as you see, had a terrific mustache yesterday. Uh, borderline scary, but uh, it was uh, much appreciated. We had a good laugh. So anyways, I thought I'd start it off with a little bit of levity today. And uh, I'm excited to, uh, to introduce our speaker and um, we'll kind of move forward with that right now. Um, uh, before I introduce Pamela, as you can see some of uh, her background on the screen, I did want to say a little bit about our webinar series. Uh, most of you are familiar with this and have seen this for quite a while, but uh, Stelter as an industry leader is committed to providing, uh, obviously, innovations, uh, innovative solutions and education throughout the industry. Uh, the last couple months, we've definitely stepped up a lot of our uh, communication, and hopefully that's been of value as you navigated uh, uh, these waters. Uh, our webinar series is an annual uh, series, and we're uh, honored to host such a great uh, lineup of, of speakers. And today is our sixth webinar, hard to believe, of the 2020 curriculum. Um, uh, also uh, coming up later this year will be Cindy Atmar from University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. Uh, she'll be teaching us how to harness the power of blended gifts. Uh, Catherine Myrie uh, will actually be joining us as well later this year to help uh, you design the perfect marketing strategy for your gift planning program. And then the infamous uh, Russell, Dr. Russell James will also share some of his most recent observations as it relates to engaging, communicating with baby boomers. Uh, as always, uh, we archive and record all of our webinars. So the previous ones, if you may have missed them uh, or even previous years are on our website at stelter.com backslash webinars. Invite you to uh, see those uh, after today's uh, session. We will actually be sending out the link to this uh, webinar as well. So back to our presenter, as I mentioned, uh, Pamela Jones Davidson. Uh, I think we've known each other now for 20-ish years, probably give or take. I hope. Uh, Pamela, if you haven't heard her for, uh, before, you're in for a treat, a terrific speaker, uh, maybe a little bit of energy. Uh, so uh, really looking forward to bringing that to your uh, to your desktops and laptops today. But she's the president of Davidson Gift Design in Bloomington, Indiana, uh, where she specializes in all kinds of consulting around gift planning and training. Uh, also a senior uh, uh, vice president at the Tops, uh, Thompson Associates, uh, where they offer estate planning services to nonprofits. Uh, she was at the Indiana University Foundation for almost 12 years, uh, leaving at that time as a, uh, its executive director of plan giving and associate counsel. Uh, she also has a degree, a BA from Indiana University and gradu graduated magna cum laude from the Indiana University School of Law uh, in Indianapolis, uh, has been an examiner in the estate and gift tax division of the IRS and practiced law in Indianapolis. Uh, Ms. Davidson was the 1999 president, uh, now chair, uh, of the National Committee on Plan Giving, a great group. Now, uh, uh, was, I think it was NCPG at the time, probably, yes. and now yes. PGP, uh, yes. and was on its board for six years and serves on a variety of other boards. So, uh, very excited uh, to have Pamela as part of our, uh, our, our docket this year, and I will turn over the reins to her. It's all yours. Oh, thank you, Nathan. Well, what a privilege and an honor to be with my esteemed colleagues on on this webinar. And kudos to Stelter, six so far, and all those speaker names. I'm honored to be in the group. Uh, but at this particular time, people are really in kind of a stunned position. So everybody's thinking, what can we be doing? What can we be talking about? What's appropriate? What's not appropriate? Nathan alluded to the incredible Russell James from Lubbock, Texas, Texas Tech. And Russell, 
Uh, I heard a, a recording he did just recently with Eddie Thompson, and they were talking about using this time to reach out to some of your most important donors. How are you doing? How are you, how is your family? How are you managing? To be empathetic and to work on that relationship aspect. Honestly, if they make the gift anytime in this calendar year, it will count for their tax purposes. So people are just kind of in a frozen state of let's see what happens. I would also say in that vein, if you're thinking, oh, is it inappropriate to even continue our newsletters to talk about planning? Planning interest has gone way up. That recording also told us that sadly, people are using wills online and creating their own wills like mad. Uh, people are talking about planning in ways they have not for a long time. So if you've already been mailing, keep mailing because your topic is very, very valuable to people as they decide. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today in this context and now? And you know me, I'm a Hoosier through and through all, all day long. Practical and pragmatic carry the day. This presentation does not talk about the tax code. We need not because the tax code does not drive gifts. What drives gifts in my estimation? My planning needs. I have three glorious children. I will be playing online trivia with two of them later tonight. I'm bringing the food, of course. Uh, and I love those three children more than I love any charity and I love charity plenty big. So I will not give to charity unless I can see a way to make it work in what I really care about. My husband, who I've only been with since I was 18, and my three children or charity, but can I blend them? So what this presentation is really going to talk about is that when you go and see your prospects, when you encounter your leadership at the farmer's market, as I do, when you run into people, you know, you're not there for a call, and you're doing chitter chat, small talk, which I just love, 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 I pretty much promise you, as we look at these slides, you will hear many things those prospects and donors are saying to you that could trigger a, an affirmative concrete idea in the here and now, right now, to address that concern. So that's what it's really about. This is really a can-do presentation, and it really says you have an affirmative role in suggesting something. Uh, here's a perfect example. I love public uh, TV and radio all day long, volunteer, in my estate plan, you name it. Um, uh, Judy Woodruff, the incredible uh, PBS NewsHour, came to Bloomington. I got to meet her. Incredible professional. I was at our farmer's market two days later, ran into two uh, girlfriends. They both worked at IU. We were talking about journalism, how important. I, I said, right then, they're not my prospects. I said, right then, you could help support journalism on public uh, radio or TV. You both have TIAA retirement plans. You could go online today and designate a small, modest percent to our local stations. You can take care of every other charity you care about in that way, and those gifts would be taxed to children. Okay. The other day, my husband, we were talking about our beneficiary designations because, my gosh, the former banker, Jeff, the geek squad, said we ought to be planning. And I gave him my list of beneficiary designations for charity that are going to go on one. Here's what Jeff said. Well, we have other ways. We can do that with life insurance. I said, ho, ho, no. Our kids get that tax free. No, no, no. We're going to use retirement plans because they will pay a tax as I did when I got that tiny sliver of my late dad's. He said, oh yeah. So it's really being smart about the gift and you're taking a role in that because, you know, I grew up in this town of 400 people in Northern Indiana with a party telephone line and wise mom said to me and my sister's girls, in a small town, all you have is your reputation. And that is true in charitable gift planning. I want to be very ethical. I want to respond to what I hear from them. You know, your charity has limitless needs, but the donor has to have their assets work in some way that meets their goals. Russell James also tells us a mere 3% of a portfolio is in cash, 97% is in assets. He harangues us, why are you fighting for 
the 3%. Well said. Okay, so donors and prospects also often chitter chat about their personal concerns, what they perceive as their impediments to giving. I would love to give to you, but dot, 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 fill in the blank. What's our role? Listen. Listen, 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 and attempt to move the process along. Don't let it die right then and there. Don't let it die. Keep it going. I always say my goal is a gift conversation. It's not a gift because I've had people take seven years to decide on a gift, and so be it. I've had people decide on the spot. And you have too. So I want to give conversations so I have a chance to help them make an informed decision. Our three children went to Montessori, stretched out merely 17 years we were in that school. And it's really a process of helping them make good choices. That's really what Montessori does is let your child have a lot of initiative to make good choices. Same with our donors and prospects. Let them make a good choice and it unfolds. Because there's an upside and a downside to every gift plan. Okay, and what do we know? A plan gift can meet even exceed those expectations most time. But uh, 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 the details and the timing are very essential, as is motivation and education and awareness. You've heard, if you've heard me speak, you know I often say I'm always casting my line. I'm always going fishing. You know, not I, I'm not looking for a gift now if and when if and when you can't stand being a rental landlord anymore in a college town. I, I mean, our our town, Bloomington, Indiana, now looks urban because developers are rapacious. So people getting out of of, of, of you know, rental properties, they want to capture appreciation, diversify that appreciation into income. Uh, before we go on to slide two, I will tell you, my husband, my father, my late father, economist, oh my goodness, economist. And I learned so much about, you know, the choice of decisions and how the timing matters and how you have to talk about things for a long, long time, but it has to also balance out in terms of the, I need this for my furthering my plan. And I have a scarcity of assets. I have to make choices. Some of these plans are irrevocable. Help me make good choices. That's our role gift conversation, education, and awareness. So what are some of the impediments to giving you've heard? So let's look at some of them. Our mission, here's the Harvey DeFreeze line. Harvey DeFreeze, who wrote the first Charitable Manger Trust, gone to his great reward. Harvey DeFreeze, brilliant, brilliant. I, I When I first heard this, I thought it was foolish. It's brilliant. He says, the role of the gift planner, our role is to ask everyone, the two women I knew at the farmer's market, and, and I will say that after I told them how to support PBS and NPR locally, and they're saying, they both went like this. That's a great idea. Yeah, affirmation. Yes, I loved it. So Harvey DeFree says, what's the role of the gift planner? To ask many, I don't care if they're your prospect or not, because nobody gives to just one charity, to ask many would you consider making a plan gift if I could show you how? That's brilliant because if I fail, you're off the hook. I love it, love it, love it. And I, I always win my mission. Okay, so what are some of these shared sentiments? The prospect says, oh, income. This is number one. Everybody is worried, worried, worried about income, how to grow it, how to maintain it, how to keep it. You know, all my retirement plans have taken a, a, a black eye sock and yours have too. We're all on this together. No one's saved. Thank goodness we're in mutual funds, so we get to share the risk. But we're all in this boat together, rowing, rowing, seeing what's going to happen. So lots of people are concerned about income, how to grow it, how to provide income for a spouse. And CD rates are so low. My son down the street, who is 32, is the investor in training. He calls his father the former banker and they have conversations. He had a CD in high school. What? Oh my goodness, we've always, Santa always had savings bonds in their Christmas stockings because we wanted them to believe Santa was a saver. So it obviously worked. Okay, so he's worried, he owns some stock. He tells me, I own that stock, so shop the, yeah, I, really, he's 32, I'm so proud. But CD rates are so low. CDs are the leading investment choice in America. So this is kind of a universal thing. So the prospect is said to you in your chitter chat, your small talk. Oh, income. I'm so concerned. What, how to make sure. Okay. What do you say? They're charitable gift plans that pay income to people. 
both a simple plan and a more complex one. Isn't that true? What's the simple plan? Gift annuities. What's the more complex plan? Charitable Manager Trust. I don't know much more about it than that, but may I have so-and-so contact you to talk through those options? Yes. It might not be you, but you can do the handoff. This is fantastic. There are charitable plans. I will tell you, I'm on, I, I've, I've served my community a lot, but I, I was on a call this week, Donor Development Committee for our nationally recognized women's shelter. Jesse Eisenberg, the actor, is there right now sanitizing. Okay, that's another whole story. Ask me about that. But it's an incredible place. And we were talking about fundraising. They can't do the normal things. The firm sales up in, in the, who knows, can we do our, lots of love, all this stuff. Anyway, so I talk about charitable gift plans. And before the call is over, Audrey on the call, older woman, because we're doing a Zoom call, says, what about that charitable plan? What were you talking about? So I got to do a tutorial about charitable gift annuities. And I said to Audrey, Audrey, if you want me to run calculations for you, send me your birthday. If you have another older person, I don't know anything about your personal life. But as long as they're older, I'll run calculations. Then I'll call you and we'll talk through them. Is Audrey my contact? Heck no. Is a gift annuity a smart idea for Audrey? You betcha. It's part of a diversified estate plan. It's not the all or be all, but it, it's one thing that provides income amongst others, right? It fits. So gift annuities should be flying off the shelves. And by the way, I spoke at the AZGA conference, went virtual, so much fun. But I do not assume, and please do not assume, that the ACGA rate is what everybody wants. I call it the maximum rate. Here's the economist in me. Um, you know, I take a variety of calculations, deferred rates, less than the maximum rates, a whole panoply, and say da 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 da. Because the truth is, with a gift annuity, if and when, and if and when is the right term, the financial market goes south again, the fund that you want it to be charitable supports the entire loss. So if you really care about what the fund is going to do eventually, may we talk to you about other than the maximum ACGA rate. And I just mentioned that to you because they're going to do repeat gifts. And if you can negotiate and do that better on the front end and have them repeat that to others and they see how little their income is affected by taking a percent less, you have done your charity a very good deed in uncertain uh, future economic times. And people like it. Because people want that charitable purpose to be robust. They care about that. They aren't just saying, pay me as much. I care about the scholarship fund. All right, what is the next shared sentiment? The prospect says, I can't manage that rental property anymore. Oh, my gosh, that landlord-tenant loss. It's so terrible. Or I have a farm. The tenant farmers come in and said, I want to buy it. I want to work less, but, boy, do I need that income. I've always had rental income. I've had farm income. I really want need income, and I've been the farm manager. I've been the property manager. My spouse is not, you know. Honestly, I married my, I met my husband at 18 in college and we married when I was 21 and we've been together forever and ever. He's the financial manager of the family and he ought to be scared every night that he has not tutored me in what I need to know. I will tell you that if you worry about this too, the estate planning attorneys here in town say, what's the big nightmare? Um, uh, passwords. They can't get into accounts. They don't know passwords and listing of assets so passwords so i heard this at a seminar came home and told my husband about four years ago oh, i don't know any of the passwords and he looked at me and said the kids know all of them i i just wanted to lunge at him what can i say so do a list of passwords that not it's not locked in your computer giving you a little advice there i'd never thought about that but that's so if facebook won't give it up your securities broker won't either okay so the prospect says i no longer want to manage a rental property or farm i need to work less i need income i don't want to pay those capital gains i have all this appreciation and i need to invest every cent i can and by the way i need to make sure my spouse who is not the financial manager i have been has income when I am gone. That That's the implicit end to this. What do you say? There are charitable gift plans that pay income to donors, both a simple and a more complex option. That first sentence, 
I have said in every local board I have ever been in, in every national board, if we went out next, the next 10 people walking in this building, have you ever heard of a charitable plan and pays income to you or others? The answer would be a hearty high ho no. Because no attorney has heard of a charitable gift annuity unless they've worked on one or actually read the literature from their church or university if they've done that. But uh, no, most people have never heard of income from a charitable plan. Instead, in December, I write a check and it's minus, minus, minus in my checking account. That's that's the way we think about it. We never think of conversion, diversification. We should change that up. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. There are charitable gift plans. And what what is the person said? I can't manage the rental property, the farm, I, I need the income. What do you say? They are charitable gift plans to pay income to donors, both a simple and a more complex one, gift annuity, charitable mind your trust. Those should be funded with the appreciated asset itself for maximum tax advantage. Why is that so important? We don't want them to go out and sell it and run to us with cash. No, 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 no. Russell James says, no matter even if the standard deduction has been doubled, we still have, you can fund the charitable plan with highly appreciated property and not pay capital gains and have the income plan funded with the full amount if you've held it a year and a day. He said, huge, huge, put a banner, carry it out. Talk about that all the time. So yeah, I have floated that. I've cast my line with people who own appreciated property here in town with that one just to tell them if and when. If and when, you know, Menards comes back in and says, can I buy your property? If that happens, you could always put some of it into a charitable plan and get some great tax breaks. Okay, so if there are charitable gift plans to pay income to donors, both a simple and more complex one. Those should be funded with the appreciated asset itself for maximum tax advantage. That's there so they don't go out and sell. I don't know much more about it than that, but can I have somebody come in and talk to you about it? If that's you, super. Super. If that's you, that's great. But if not, be sure and name who that is because, by the way, as someone who consults, who looks at websites, I'm appalled at how many nonprofits don't have a picture or something personal about their plan giving person or even their development staff. I'm just kind of amazed because in Indiana, we want to see what you look like. We want to recognize you. We're very personal and, you know, we have to take cut taste the cut of your jib and, you know, figure all that out first because we're, before we're going to talk to you. So please make it a little personal. Put your CEO, your, I'm amazed. I could find board of directors, but I can never find staff. Are you kidding me? Do you turn them over that quick? What's wrong? It upsets me. All right. Shared sentiment. The prospect says that the couple can foresee a time where they will no longer be able to drive to their in-state or out-of-state vacation home, which the children do not want or they do not have children. I have heard this. I can see it. And why do I say I can foresee a time? Because they, they are charitable plans funded with such appreciated assets that pay income to you or others or a gift can be made of certain property now after you live there for your lives or a term of years often with great income tax breaks. This is great. This is the simplification because if I can do a retained life estate or even a retained term of years, Robert Sharp says it's not just life estate. Often they know they're not driving west or north or south many more years or they're going to move to Florida and not come back, whatever it is. He says they often know. So put that out there. It's not term of years. It might be it's term of years or lives. That is part of simplification because every one of us could use an income tax break and hardly anybody we know. It's only the lucky, lucky, lucky few who have an estate tax issue. So if I can do a retained life estate or term of years on my watch and there it's done and I've gotten an income tax break and now my estate doesn't have to hold real estate and pay to mow and you, you know keep it nice and not have people break into it, blah, 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 all that stuff. The neighbors hate you as it sits there waiting to be sold. It's a brilliant plan. We ought to be doing this a lot. The only three assets that can take that, a retained life estate, personal residence, vacation home, or farm. 
Nature Conservancy and Land Trust here in my area. Uh, they are doing these gifts like mad with people deeding their beautiful farm, their beautiful property, getting that big income tax deduction, enjoying it, but knowing that it's going to be in the public realm. They love it, love it, love it. So I don't know much more about it, but I can have somebody talk to you about that. No question. All right. So what's the next one? All right. The prospect says. I'm supporting an older generation. Oh, I just can't help you now. I have to wait till I'm done helping my the the dogs wanting to get one of the many dogs. Um, I, I'm supporting my parents. I'm supporting my in-laws. That's why I can't make a gift now. I have to wait till that's over. You know, I will tell you, uh, I, I'm a chatty person anyway, can you tell? But I always ask people, if somebody says, I want to do a gift annuity for one person, I said, is there another older person you're concerned about their income? Is there a sister, a sibling? I've had people who talk to me about the neighbor who always mows their lawn and brings in the mail in, in bad weather. I mean, really, it could be anybody as long as they're older. It need not be a family member or a spouse. So I actually ask that because it, it doesn't change the numbers very much to add that second older person and they feel so darn good about it. So the prospect says this, what are we going to answer to this? There is a charitable plan called charitable gift annuities around since 1831. You know why I always put that in there? What's been around since 1831? That's like the good housekeeping seal of approval. Yale. University, Ron Brown, he'll tell you the story. There's a charitable plan called Charitable Gift Annuities around since 1831, paying often higher than market rates for life to older people. Higher than market rates for life. You'll never renegotiate it. You know, when my dad died, my much younger stepmom didn't get his Social Security and hers. No, they increased her somewhat. But she lost by not having the full amount of his second. So I often say to people, you'll never renegotiate it. The survivor gets the full amount. All these things you know people have experienced and fret about, whether they've said it to you or not. There's a charitable plan called Charitable Gift Annuities around since 1831, paying often higher than market rates for life to older people. You could fund one for that older generation, providing income to them and very attractive tax income tax advantages for you. I don't know much more about it, but can so-and-so contact you? I've had people do these as tribute or memorial gifts to their parents while they're still alive to know it. That is a beautiful thing. Otherwise, they die. It's in the obit. Mom and dad never knew. But to do this, I'm going to do a gift annuity. Mom, dad, you pick the ultimate use in our community, what that fund's going to do after you're gone. I've had kids do that. Those are great kids. That's a great kid. So I can do that. And the other thing about the gift annuity, my friends, it pays more than any of us could ever earn investing ourselves. So we are paying our parents with hard rot dollars. We are dipping into principal every time we send them a check where a gift annuity pays that higher than market rate of return. And yes, I know the rates are changing on July 1st. Going to go down. I, I still say, I saw somebody say, oh, we're having a sale. I don't like that term. No, no, no. What's the ultimate use of the fund? Let's talk about how that's impacted by these higher rates and lower rates. Let's talk about that. that that's much more planning oriented and much more reputational. You're building your reputation for caring about them, caring about their needs, caring about what you think they might care about. What is the scholarship fund eventually going to have in it? I think that's all true. All right, what's the next shared sentiment? The prospect says to you, oh, I have a child with issues. Could be financial, substance, even in-law issues. This is true. And is concerned about how to protect their inheritance. Oh, I just haven't figured that out. I'm so concerned. What do I do? Uh, what, can I, uh, what can I do? Here's your response. There are charitable plans to pay income to younger heirs while protecting a portfolio from creditors. And also enjoying market activity so we can go in the future and provide more income. What's that? Turtle Mater Unit Trust. That's absolutely right. Income to younger heirs, maybe 20 years, protects the portfolio from creditors. That's right. And enjoys market growth. That's all true. Provide more income for that young. It's a brilliant statement. I, well, it's a very good statement. I don't know much more about it than that, but may I have a person contact you to talk to, uh, to talk about this uh, before uh, 
to talk to you more about this. Sorry, I got a command. I didn't know what it meant. Um, it can. I don't know much more about it than that. Oh dear, I don't know what I've done. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I'll just close that. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I don't know much more about it than that. But can I have so and so contact you and even run numbers for you? Because I worked at the IRS Estate and Gift Tax Division. Ronald Reagan was president. Oh, we had 13, 14, 15 examiners. Now there's one in you know in many states. So it was a different time. The exemption equivalent was six hundred thousand. That's a different day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's all true. I had that. Uh, so I learned from working for the IRS that numbers can be very compelling. So people are interested in seeing how it works in their situation. So I love to offer numbers for somebody in that situation. So I love this one. I love this one so much. Let's see if my next one, or maybe I disconnected. Jen, if I did that, you want to move to the next slide for me? That command must. Thank you, Jen. Jen is fantastic. Uh, the prospect tells you that they have seen a stock price they wish they could cash in on or that the tenant farmer has told them they want to buy the farm, but fear of capital gains, they've stolen, stalled, have done nothing. That's exactly what happens. When you have this situation, you know there are tax situations. You just don't know what to do. And so you've just been in a state and you just you just are paralyzed with inaction. Jen, may you do will you do the next one, please? What does you what do you say? There are charitable plans that could be funded with appreciated assets that pay income to you or others, or a charitable gift could be made of part or all of a certain property outright. Those can simplify and diversify your estate. That is great. I don't know much more about it, but can I have so-and-so talk with you? Now, <clears throat> a lot of the comments I've made today so far have been about income plans, and people are interested in income. I am. You are too. So income plans, charitable gift annuities, running off the shelf. And by the way, if you're listening from a smaller charity, run down the street to your community foundation and ask what they can do for you so you can have a gift annuity program that you don't have to house in your own charity. You can have it with a collaborator and Indiana is rich with community foundations, so you could do that. But this slide, notice it says, there are charitable plans that could be funded with appreciated assets that pay income to you or others, or a charitable gift could be made of the property outright. Why did I say that? Well, <clears throat> excuse me, those Nature Conservancy, <clears throat> excuse me, those Nature Conservancy or Land Trust gifts. But here's my story. Uh, years ago when I uh, worked at uh, a higher ed foundation, got a call one day, a, a lovely man from Sioux City, Iowa, ran a brick company. He had a farm in Southern Indiana. His three sons, very well educated, all lived in the cities. He said to his sons, what should I do with that Indiana farm? Oh, dad, give it to us. And dad was really torn because he said, it'll never mean more to those kids than a, a check from a, a man, farmer manager, a farm manager. And he was really uh, upset about that farm. He ended up, he really figured it out himself. He ended up giving that outright to the Higher Ed Foundation for scholarships for kids from that county. Um, he made an outright gift and he felt like a million bucks. Indiana is famous for our fire truck parades. That means when he and his sons visited, went to town, they get the fire trucks out and we all make a parade and drive through town and have a lot of fun, do it with the marching band and everybody else. We like a fire truck parade. They got one. His family, he was so delighted with this gift because he said, it's been in my family for 185 years. I want to give it back to that county. He said, that's one of the poorest counties in Indiana. Very few kids can go to college. He felt like a million bucks. We featured it in our annual report. He called us three times for extra copies to share it with others. So it can be outright. Don't think it cannot, depending on the mission. Okay, would you advance, Jen? Okay, the prospect says, I don't need to have a gift conversation. My estate is all planned and complete. I don't need any further review. Isn't this the most common thing? This is the most common. Next, please, Jan. What do you say? 
with the huge federal estate tax exemption, more people are using certain assets at the right life stage to convert those from appreciation to income with very attractive income tax breaks. That sentence is loaded, loaded. Life stage gifts convert from appreciation to income with very attractive income tax breaks. I don't know much more about it, but can I have so-and-so contact you and run numbers? You know, that's what I was gonna say about my dad and Jeff being economists. I now say to many prospects, a planned gift can be, maybe should be part of a diversified portfolio. That is a very economically stated proposition, but it's absolutely true. Andre Danikian, the late, great Andre Danikian, really uh, hammered that into us. He said to our plan giving council once, of course he was a speaker, please be members of your plan giving council if you love these ideas, because that's the best source of practicing this information. Do my national organization, you know, promo. That's absolutely true. But Andre said, you all love trust. But he said, even high wealth people like some gift annuities and some fixed income. And he says, nine out of 10 people will choose a simple gift plan over a complex. His words have true a born truth. So I go from simple to complex. And as an attorney, most people saying, oh, let's start with the complex. Who's going to be the trustee? Who's the, uh, uh, there's so many choices. And when I say to Hoosiers who hate to pay for anything, when I say, oh, there's going to be a, an investment fee and a, tr a tax return preparation fee and maybe a management fee, it, they run for cover because they don't want to know or see about fees. So uh, Andre is right. Nine out of 10 people will choose a simple. But these life stage gifts, that's absolutely true. And notice it says with very attractive income tax breaks doesn't just say tax breaks, it says income tax breaks. I, 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 I'm wildly in love with this one. Uh, next, please, Jen. All right. The prospect says at some future time, your charity is going to get her home or farm or vacation home. If you're a member of a church, ask your minister or pastor next time you see him or her, have you had any parishioner ever say this to you? And I want to say, I bet the answer will be 100%. And as a good parishioner of your church, you could say to that pastor, oh, uh, Jen, go to the next slide because we have an answer for that pastor. We've got it. There is a gift plan that lets you deed that property during your life to our charity, our church, whatever. You can live there for life, for your spouse's or sibling's life too, if relevant. It, it, it simplifies your state and you get a current income tax deduction. What is that, a retained life estate or retained term of years? That's what that is. This is a fantastic idea. Why should that older person wait until their estate, pay for the estate to manage and pay to sell the property when she can deed it during her life, know it's been done on her watch, get an income tax deduction that lets her keep some more of her retirement pay or social security. And when she passes away, the church opens the door and takes possession and sells it or keeps it or whatever. Much better plan. Much better. Plan. I do not know why that plan does not run off the shelf. I'm Absolutely stunned that we don't talk about that because I know many people without children or children who will never go back to the familial home ever. So those are your prospects for those. The you know family's not coming back and it works for a vacation home. I've had luck with you know retirement communities. The kids are like, no, don't want it. Perfect for this gift. Income tax deduction simplifies the state. And if the retirement home, if the second home is out of state, no more ancillary jurisdiction. I hope you know if you own a, a ho second home here in beautiful Indiana, and I hope you do, if you do and you live in another state, only Indiana can transfer that real estate. So once you pass on, your estate has to open a small estate in the county in which that property is located simply to transfer that property pursuant to Indiana law. So if I, de if I deed that property away, oh, my estate saves money. No ancillary jurisdiction took care of one thing. Simple. Thoreau was right. 
you know, I was just watching PBS and we went to Walden Pond together and it was simplify, simplify and so on and so forth. He was right. And I, I, it wasn't just that, you know, woman, Marie, somebody who says unload everything. Uh, don't look behind me. Um, it wasn't just her, but a lot of us know we need to simplify. We can't let our kids deal with the morass. All right. Next slide, Jen, please. All right. The prospect says, gee, I'd love to help you, but I have savings bonds and gee whiz. That I, yeah, and, and you've asked about that. I, I will tell you there there's maybe five to six billion dollars in matured unredeemed savings bonds in this country. So lots of Hoosiers have them. So I've learned to ask about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll say. I don't know anything about you, but do you have U.S. savings bonds? And they say, yes, I forgot all about that. Oh, my gosh. I had somebody say to me, oh, I inherited from mom's estate. They're in my safety deposit box. I've had no idea what to do with it. Next slide, please, Jen. What do you say? You could catch those savings bonds in. Yep, you're going to. You're going to pay some income tax on that. I'll tell you right now, because you can't just give us the bonds. It's ordinary income. You could make a gift of those proceeds to our charity, or you can use those proceeds to fund a charitable gift annuity that pays income for life to you and another, even bequeath them to our charity. May I have somebody contact you about that, even run numbers? This is a great idea. I have met so many people with matured, unredeemed savings bonds. And if I can now make the gift I didn't think I could afford to because I have these and I've never had income that I've known from them anyway, and now I can give them to you and I'll get an income tax deduction if I if I itemize um, and all that as well. Or I could cash those in and fund an income producing arrangement for me and another older person. That's unbelievable. Or plan B. C, the least important, I could say in my will or estate, I give all my U.S. government obligations of whatever kind or amount to these three charities and are equal shares. So I have options. So put U.S. savings bonds. I will tell you, I know we're going to go to questions here in a minute if we even have them. I, I can't tell if we have. But I was talking about this decades ago at a conference. And there were like 350 people in the room. And a woman in the front row says, Pam, this, these savings bonds must be a Midwestern thing. I've never had a donor talk to me about savings bonds. So I said to the group, how many of you have savings bonds? Two-thirds of the hands went up. She gasped and jumped. I used to give them as graduation gifts because you couldn't run down and cash them. It was my favorite graduation gift. And savings bonds, those ones in the stocking from Santa, they paid for my trips, my son's trip to Egypt for two months when he was getting his, mas his master's or bachelor's in Arabic. All right, Jen, you want to go to the next one? Because if you use them for educational expenses, you don't pay income. Yeah. All right. The prospect talks to you. I better do this quickly. The prospect talks to you about a retirement plan. I'd love to help you, but I'm so illiquid. Oh, that retirement plan. I've got that annual required minimum distribution and it gets taxed. And that Secure Act, isn't that a big old problem? I, you know, retirement plans. I live in a college town. I assume everybody has TIAA unless they tell me otherwise. You know, Cummins Engine is in the next town. Uh, it's in Columbus. Uh, Eli Lilly is up the road in Indianapolis. Those are all corporate companies with retirement plans. So there's lots of times you can assume and guess people have them, but they'll talk about that. I'd love to help you, but I've got this retirement plan. I'm illiquid. Jen, you want to go to the next slide, please? All right. If you are 70, if you have an IRA and are 70 and a half and older, you can direct your plan custodian to pay contributions directly from your IRA to our public charities. <gasps> Count as RMD. They won't be included in your taxable IRA income. I don't know much more about it than that, but can so-and-so talk to you? Russell James says these should be flying off the shelf. With the doubling of the standard deduction, this is how people can at least get some effect from making gifts out of their IRA. And I will tell you, if you are on volunteer boards like I am, I talk about this relentlessly and have had girlfriends and friends here in town run to their portfolio managers and force them to do the IRA charitable rollover because they give to a variety of charities and they loved it so much. So you can be a, they don't have to be your prospects for you to give people good ideas. That's what I would say. All right. You want to go to the next one, Jen? And we'll go to uh, the questions no later than 
three more minutes, I promise you. All right, the portfolio says you're illiquid. They're illiquid, I can't help you. It's all in retirement plans and I'm not gonna get that out during life because that's gonna create taxable withdrawals. Forget that, Charity, you're out of your mind to ask me to actually put taxable income effect into my own income tax picture. Next slide, Jen, please. One of the best ways to support various charities now is by designating a revocable percentage of what is left of that retirement plan after your and your spouse's use to one or more charities. You can do it online. All ages can do it using an asset that's taxed to children to inherit. I suggest this to everyone. My oldest child, who's 35, she's been a planned gift donor since age 22 because of this suggestion. The Marion County Humane Society, where she got the first of her two rescued pit bulls, she and her husband. This is fantastic. I know it's not dollars today. It's not that last one, the IRA charitable rollover, which creates wealth, the income that you need. But I, I will tell you, I, I got a call from Iowa Public Television several months ago. They said the now amount of monthly IRA IRA rollover gifts coming has just ballooned and it should in yours too. So if you aren't marketing that, do that because that's cash in hand unrestricted. You do know there's a movement to let those IRA distributions do be directed to a gift annuity, charitable major trust or pooled income fund an ACGA sponsored piece of legislation and Congress is okay with it because you pay income off income from a gift annuity or a trust. So they're good with it. So that may happen. That will change our whole world. The SECURE Act, it might mean that other IRA and other kinds of retirement plans are now testamentarily directed to a charitable major trust between the beneficiary designation and the charitable major trust language in the will. It can be done. I can preserve a retirement plan portfolio after my husband and I use it if I have enough for a trust, if I have enough for the benefit of my three exceptional, fantastic, beloved children. All right, so we should suggest this revocable percentage designation all the time. This is what I suggested to the two Judy Woodruff fans. This is what I am using, using assets that are taxed to kids. Cast your line. If they're not your prospect, we do not care. They are interested in this idea. I live in a very loving community and I have suggested this to a mere, because I am the banker's daughter. I want money to stay local. I say to people all the time, all money leaves. It leaves with your kids and in inheritance. It leaves in taxes. It leaves in those annuities you did with the retirement company. It leaves the community. So help us keep some money local. That's one reason I talk about this so much. All right. I think let's go to the next slide just so we can see what it says. All right. Here it is. Yay. You are hearing this all the time. So what can you do to listen and respond then and there? I haven't said anything complex. I have just said a transitional line to help you get it to the next level. Your goal is a gift conversation with many. Don't let it just not be answered. And if any of these things happen, if if you in the moment you hear any of this and you say, oh, she said that, what was it? What I would say is go back, look at this handout again and call them and said, you know what I should have said to you? I I was just so interested. It's, you know, save yourself, reach out and touch somebody and, you know, work on the relationship. All right, Jen, tell us if we have any questions or if I, and the SECURE Act, I just put that on at the end, you know about it, but it helps us do more planned gifts because people like problem solving and we're good problem solving. So Jen, Nathan, do we have any questions? Yeah, we sure do have some questions. I sent some along to Nathan, so I'm going to see if he's Still with us. I know we had a call that he was going to have to get on pretty soon. So, Nathan, are you there? I am. I've been listening attentively and taking lots of notes. <laughs> you know Wonderful. everything I've said. <laughs> it's the pragmatic and practical Pam. Okay, I'll go ahead and start with a question from Kylie. Kylie um, says that on the CGP link, someone suggested recently that the charity can create an account with the U.S. Treasury and have savings bonds transferred to the charity. Is this possible? 
Wow. Uh, Kylie, I hope I got that right. I don't know, but I, that makes all the sense in the world with everything going electronic. I will have to find that out and update it. So if you email me, I will let you know. And Nathan, we should know that because that's, that's really kind of an interesting idea. But with everything else going electronic, why not? And fewer banks in every community that makes, and banks aren't really the agents anymore the way they once were. So Nathan, do you happen to know? No, I don't either. I made a note of that as well. Uh, that yeah, is well, pretty interesting. Those savings bonds, I cannot tell you, that's just an amazing asset many of us have. I always say assets are a universal language. So you can tell from everything, assets and needs, assets and needs. I, I worked at this higher ed place during six, no, during three capital campaigns. I'll be honest, I never took the campaign literature not once to any one person. I would say to every person at such and such, our needs are limitless. What do you like? And my gift, was, my goal was to make the gift grow, not to focus them into giving to something. Because honestly, in higher ed, everything counts in your campaign some way or the other. All right, Jen, we're ready for the next question. Okay, we've got one from Diane. She um, goes back to the beginning of your presentation um, and says, my CEO won't allow funding a CGA with real estate for the fear that it can't be sold before the first annuity payment. Do you have any suggestions? Well, yes, that's a concern with everybody. And, uh, you know, Brian Klontz makes a great business out of that, fielding those kinds of plans. So you can always use a, a agent, a company like Brian Klontz's company, because they do exactly that same thing. But I know that some charities have taken that risk. If, 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 if the gift annuity rate that is promised is less than that ACGA maximum rate or not. Number two, if they say I'll defer um, when I start receiving payment for a year or two, or if there's some, uh, you know, depending on the appraised value. When I worked at the IRS, it was all about market value. So is that market value on the high side or the low side? So there are ways to reduce your risk. But if your CEO says, no, 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 say, well, there's a company that will do it for us. And that way you can, because I always say, do a plan gift, even if you can't fully do it yourself. It's better to have a gift annuity fund down at your community foundation than no gift annuities. That's what I say. So it, because then the community foundation is one of your investment managers of funds at some point. It's not like they're going to keep the funds if it's restricted to your charity at some point. So that answer, that, that can be met. Do you agree with that, Nathan? Is that what you would say? Yeah, and I was going to say as well, we've had, and I don't know if, if, if Pam, you've had clients that have used Realty Gift Fund, uh, but Realty Gift Fund has been a tool some of our clients have used when it comes to some of those concerns with real estate gifts. And I totally agree with Brian Klontz. And actually, that tied into the next question from Julianne in regards to, obviously, you know, community foundations are a good resource, but even some community foundations are are small and don't offer CGA. So Brian Klontz's program, nationalgiftannuity.org. Uh, I know there's cgaamerica.org as well. Those are great programs to allow people to, uh, you know, offer these types of tools that may not uh, be able to, you know, manage it or do it on their own. Right, you can grow into your success. Yep. You shouldn't do a gift annuity. You shouldn't do your own gift annuities unless you have maybe as much as ten million dollars in the bank. That's the number I've always heard. And yeah. and a lot of places, all that is restricted, so it's really not available in the same way. So it's also what's the character of those funds? Hey Pamela, well, we have a couple of questions. People asking about the age for the required minimum distribution, um, which has changed recently. If you can talk about that. Right. For the IRA, interestingly enough, for the IRA charitable rollover, that age that it can be used is still 70 and a half. But we know under the SECURE Act, now we have till 72 to start taking our distributions. And I would also add, that's if you're retired. My dad had many careers and his last one was university professor. And he didn't retire until his 70s, I mean, until 75. So he was an active worker with a W-2. So it could be delayed in this breath. Uh, younger group uh, working as re in the world today. So it's 72 for you have to decide, but still 70 and a half for the IRA charitable rollover. Is that what you two understand, Nathan, that those two yep. are not in sync? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty annoying, but uh, you know, go figure. And so that is exactly what we're dealing with. And then obviously it should be noted too with the CARES Act, 
that obviously RM, RMDs are suspended for the, the remainder of 2020. Good point. Uh, so that is uh, something to take into account this year. I know we've had a lot of clients looking at IRA and QCD gifts and, um, you know, still it's a great tool, a great resource for some of those folks, but it may not be as attractive with the RMDs being suspended for uh, the remainder of the year. That is such a great point. But again, think of these gift plans in some ways diversification because that 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 is a popular concept all the time. Uh, I'm talking to I'm going to talk to my husband about taking a distribution from a retirement plan and doing a deferred gift annuity because we both have longevity in our lives. So it would make a lot of sense for us. So uh, diversification, I always think of it in economic terms. It's philanthropy too. I, don't get me wrong. It has to be philanthropy because I'm not leaving it for the kids, but it can be conversion of appreciation into income or other simplification. Exactly. Okay, um, I have a question. Oh, okay. go ahead. Yeah, well, I was going to say we have a question from Tiffany here, actually kind of a, a two-part around retained life estate. Um, as far as the comment, most are scared about giving up control of that asset because it's their largest asset. You know, you know, thinking of cues and, and clues, what would you say to a donor uh, with this reason? Uh, Tiffany, they are spot on about that. It, it, we've always said, don't make the gift unless you feel you can live without it irrevocably. But it really is their situation. And I will tell you, I did a charitable manager trust once for a rental, uh, a retired military guy, rental landlord with properties in DC. And his wife said, stop being a landlord. I'm sick of it. They did the trust first, put their daughter as a, a next generation, five years of income beneficiary. I picked up the phone and said to him, him, does your daughter need the income? No. She was married to the leading thoracic heart surgeon on the eastern seaboard. They were childless and engaged in extreme sports. He said, no. I said, well, it sounds like she has her own charitable, uh, her own uh, estate tax issues uh, without yours. So then he did a second trust and started putting those into a trust just for he and his wife. But we had to talk through it. So uh, I would say, well, what is your concern? Because if they're childless giving, that's fantastic if that's true. But if they need the income, they could also, well, but they have to do it when it's right for them. It, you can never convince them if they don't feel that it's right. But I find talking through the particulars help people congeal what they're thinking of and whether it's real or uh, imaginary. Do you, do you think that's right? Nathan? Yeah, I agree. And that really kind of answers the second part of Tiffany's question, which was just generally pertaining to homes. Some donors are concerned about the market and want to hold on to the property in hopes the market increases. And again, same type of thing uh, based on uh, what you shared. And I, I would agree with that. And, and I would add to that, you know, I always say those of us who are married are lucky because it takes both of us to go out before a crisis situation. Once the first spouse goes, then that whole planning schedule becomes very, very different, don't you think? But until that time, yeah, because a gift, when a gift happens, a gift happens. You could be encouraging on their timetable, but I will tell you asset management, diversification, simplification are far more meaningful as we age than people uh, give them credit for. Because and, and if the kids have left to do in the estate, if they don't have to manage more, we're, we're all into that. So it, it's talking through that scenario. And if with the with, uh, real estate values, I do this same thing you know when the stock market jumped up on news that a vaccine looked promising weren't we all happy about that so a, a gift that happens any time in the year or next year or whatever you're fishing the timing of it is totally up to them in fact you have heard me say this i say to many donors if and when if and when you decide this is part of the estate plan, if and when you want to convert that, if and when managing that. I use that term constantly because it, it really confirms what we know there. The, the donor drives. The donor always drives. Okay, I'm going to have to bust in. I'm sorry, Pamela <laughs> and Nathan. We've had fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're just about a minute over time, so we are going to go ahead and wrap up for today to be respectful of your time. Um, but Pamela has offered her email address to you. So if you did have a question that didn't get answered, um, you may reach out to her. Her email address is on the screen, pjdavidson at giftplanners.com. So you may jot that down. And I will also be um, giving you access to these slides so you can have that 
for later as well. If you have any questions about Stelter's products, solutions, or services, you can email Nathan or myself. Um, that's our name at stelter.com, and that's on your screen. And you can also visit our website at stelter.com. And then finally, I wanted to let you know, as I said in the beginning, we did record the session today. So barring any technical difficulties, the recording along with a copy of the handouts will be available for you to access and share with your colleagues. Um, I will be working on that today and tomorrow, and I will send you out an email as soon as those are ready for you guys to access on our website, which will be at shelter.com backslash webinars. So just finally, I just want to say thanks, Pamela, so much for spending the last hour with us. We really appreciated your expertise and uh, time and talent uh, share with our industry. And I'm not sure if Nathan's still with us, but Nathan, thanks for joining us also. And we hope to see everyone again next month for our next webinar. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye-bye. Good gift Thanks. planning. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Thank, Thank you. you. That, that was